Hello, my name's Ewan Jones and I'm joined today by Rod, who is a regular here at Speaker's Corner. And he comes here to speak about uh, anti-feminism and men's rights to general members of the public here in London in the UK. And so we're doing this video for the International Conference on Men's Issues 2020. So, Rod, how are you doing? And also, um, you know, what, what is it about Speaker's Corner as well that, um, that keeps you coming back? You know, why, why is it a good place to discuss issues to do with anti-feminism, to do with men's rights? The Speaker's Corner is a really important historic place. And taking people off the internet and putting them on t into a real place, especially in a capital city like London, a major city, and, sh and challenging feminism has really been important. The feminists know we're here. They don't come and debate us. Things have changed slightly recently, but um, mm -hmm. this is really, it's a really important thing to actually to have a, a, a living presence offline. And we've been doing this probably about six years now, I think. I'd say it's longer than that, isn't it? I don't know. Um, I, I mean, remember. we're 2020 now, and I, yeah. from what you said, it was uh, not too long after 2010 when you started coming here. Yeah, but we had groups back then. Oh, uh, okay. uh, or, sure. oh no, not uh, we start, The group started about 2011, 2012. Right, right. Yeah, and it yeah. was a couple of years later when we, well, uh, Richard brought us here, and oh, we started enough. coming. Yeah, yeah. We did come here at 2010, but um, I was too chicken to get up on the ladder. Okay, sure, sure. And, and uh, so it was a few years later when you started yeah, doing we, your speeches here. We came back, and yeah, and it, it's been brilliant. And we've seen uh, the landscapes changed around us incredibly, the political landscape, especially yeah, since yeah. 2016. Mm -hmm. So some event happened back then that changed the <laughs> political landscape, was it? Yeah, well, Brexit, Trump, um, all sorts of things. And of course, 2020, 2019 and 20, what would Black Lives Matter, Antifa, yeah, and yeah. in this country, Tommy Robinson and all sorts of things, uh, mm, just mm. completely. So, um, when you first started talking about uh, issues to do with anti-feminism and men's rights here, how how was it received? Um, we were treat, uh, we were we had received a hell of a lot of abuse. We were screamed at. We were yeah. called misogynists, often by men. Um, uh, uh, Richard was uh, Richard was pushed off a ladder at one point. I had one guy who used to really try and intimidate me by screaming in my ear at the side. Um, well, we had quite a few things happen that were rather unpleasant. But we um, it's actually a way of it's a training. We were trained up basically to be able to cope with the abuse. And as your speaking gets better and you get more confident, uh, those people you know how to deal with them. Just the other week, um, some Muslims were actually standing up for some rad fems, with rad feminists, radical feminists, which is ridiculous because they're all abortionists, and the right, Muslims didn't right. know that. And one of the Muslims told me, he says, you were born out of your mother's asshole, uh, which was rather rude. And that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds pretty rude, yeah. Yes. yeah. So, I, so it still goes on now, the yeah, abuse. Yeah, it does, but we, <laughs> we, uh, it's, it, and I had the Red Pill uh, movie poster behind me, and he says, is your mother in that? And I says, well, it's not that kind of movie. Not and the smile. feminist actually tried not to smile. <laughs> so you learn to deal with uh, the abuse. Mm, and mm, often mm. You, uh, people who behave like that aren't that bright anyway, but the, you've got to be careful because they can be quite quick to violence. And so in initially there, there was just a lot of uh, people screaming at you and abuse and so on. So yeah. I, I'm guessing a bit of a tough crowd uh, it was back, a tough, back in yeah. 2013, 2014, yeah. but then... Well, things slowly started to change it, after that. It did change, but when we immediately started, at first of all, we couldn't get anyone to stop. Yeah, yeah. Because you've got to look like you can entertain people as well. Right, right. Because people come to here to be entertained as well. And uh, so, you know, at first we just were standing there like plums. Mm -hmm. And then we started getting better. And, um, and we, all, our, all of us guys, we, we have very, very different ways of speaking and, and interacting with the crowd. And it works brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. One of the hardest things to do is that when one of my fellows is speaking, I've got to keep my mouth shut because I so much want to answer the question, mm, especially mm. if I'm standing below him. And then you find he actually answers the question sometimes better than you would. Yeah. It's really yeah, yeah. interesting. Nice, nice, yeah. And so um, I, I remember coming towards the end of 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> at that point in time, I think that there was... Um, you know, the, the movement was certainly growing. Um, there was a lot of, uh, you know, Milo Yiannopoulos was making yeah. a lot of appearances <laughs> on the mainstream media where he was destroying the feminist narrative. Yep. And, um, 
Yeah, there, there was a few other, you know, uh, instances and you know events that were happening then. Mm. I, I think it was it was changing around that time. Did did you sense us? Oh as well? yeah, 2016 was the big one. We, I mean, you you filmed us interviewing that radical Trotskyite feminist. Yeah, that that was pretty hilarious. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. hilarious. And that was just holding a little um, a GoPro, mm -hmm. which unfortunately died on me. And and it was just interacting, and we were all there. And it was before Trump came into power. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was really funny. That was a that was an interesting event. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, from from there, you know, what what's it been like uh, the last few years then? Since uh, I guess since Trump got in, and uh, you know, since we've had this uh, populist movement that has uh, grown, what's what's it been like the last few years here? Um, well, we had a problem here because there was uh, uh, radical Muslims trying to take over, and they mm -hmm. were praying here, which is illegal. You can't pr you can't have a religious service in a royal park without permission. And they were slowly turning it into an outdoor mosque, and they were beating up some of the moderate Muslims as well. We'd seen quite a bit of violence at times, mm -hmm. not too much, obviously. Um, but uh, it's, it's got better. Uh, it's become more political now. We get more people here. Um, there was a huge surge of people when Tommy Robinson was talking about the mess of um, uh, English girls being raped by, by Muslim gangs. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that was a huge surge. Um, and it's slowly got more, uh, less religious, more political, and we have a lot of foreigners who come here. We don't get that as many English people as we should at all. It's mm -hmm. really annoying. Mm -hmm. um, who want to speak about things? But we're getting, we've got. It's more interesting now than it's ever been. And uh, and at the moment, this is not going to be a mosque, so that's good. It's not right. a mosque. Right. It's, it's always been. I mean, go back, going back in history, it's always been religious. It's always been political. Mm -hmm. And it's it's often been quite um, volatile at times. Yeah, yeah. Uh. And um, and now we have red fans coming here with a lady who calls herself Posey Parker. And uh, we've never had uh, so many radical feminists come here, mm -hmm. which is really good. And of course they've been deplatformed by other feminists because of their um, uh, their anti-trans trans yeah, stand, yeah. which is really interesting. So now they, I mean, they're, they're fragmenting the feminist movement. Yes, yeah, I've, and I've seen this as well <laughs> with the uh, yeah the the old style uh, Jermaine Greer style uh, feminists and the yeah. uh, the new uh, Laura Bates style feminists yeah. who were you know were high on the intersectionality radar and so yeah. on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Her name, her real name is um, Kelly J Keane. Who was that? Uh, uh, Posey Parker. Oh, right. And okay, what's really yeah. interesting, this is the first time we've actually been able to interact with radical feminists. And, um, I mean, the gynocentrism is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've got abortionists saying, uh, think of the children. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, I call them wailing women and witches um, because uh, all of these well-off women, they're like babies. And... Um, it's really quite uh, brutal with their complete disregard for anyone else apart from their own mm, fat butts, mm. basically. Constantly wanting more. I mean, I call them, uh, I've heard of the term as uh, militant dependence. Yes. Because yeah. they, even though they're now, they, they have so much influence over, over society, they're still dependents mm -hmm. and they still want more stuff. They're not actually going to take the role where they're going to start actually looking after other people as well. And, um, it's really interesting. Black Lives Matter came along and they started having a bash at them, having a go at them because of their stance on trans. And right, we can sit right, back yeah, and yeah. be amused by this. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Because it's not, we're not really part of this. I, I tell them that yeah, um, this is what really annoys me about them. That I mean, that's just Black Lives Matter standing up for the <laughs> woke agenda, isn't it? Generally, of you know, it's yeah. uh, like got nothing to do with the black community at that point. It's uh, well, attacking the, the woke anything, uh, agenda entirely. Yeah. 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 Well, attacking anything intelligent or uplifting. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I watched some stuff on Malcolm X, and what some of the things he said was actually quite challenging. Of that, a lot of the Black Lives Matter people wouldn't agree with that at all. Mm, mm -hmm. well, I don't know anything about Malcolm X, but. That was interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that is now the new flavor of what we're dealing with, what's happening now. And, of course, we're now dealing with the lockdown crowds. Mm -hmm. But, of course, I keep bashing on with my thing is about feminism um, and talking about uh, the dictionary definition is nothing on what, uh, you know, it says what feminism is, but it's not what it does. And to have radical feminists here, and we often find when we're speaking to a feminist woman or an outraged woman, 
you're not actually speaking to the person. Yeah, you're using yeah. them as an example to the crowd. And the foul language, the um, unpleasantness, often the storming off with it giving you the finger, um, all this sort of thing. And, and, and I've also had the chance to meet academics, and I'm absolutely shocked. I mean, when you get older, your doctor looks young to you. And now, and some of these academics look like kids to me, but um, there's no standard of academia in any of their conduct. And you actually get a full-on tantrum from somebody who's, on, who's very well paid and who's teaching young people. It's horrible. And so we see the, a little bit of that here then. The, I have the seen academics it in the past. coming along and yeah. uh, you reduce them to uh, going for a full a tantrum. Blown adult tantrum. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, one I've, of, I've witnessed it as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of our colleagues went and spoke to the guy and got through a bit better. I was actually probably a bit more confrontational with the guy. But um, and there were three of them, a woman who's, who had social skills, a big bloke who looked like he'd just rolled out of a dustbin, and, mm -hmm. and a little Asian guy who was having a massive tantrum. Okay. And these, it, you were just thinking, what the hell is this? Yeah. An yeah. academic is meant to be someone like, um, you know, Janice Fiamingo. That's somebody who is yeah, inspiring. Yeah. Uh-huh. Interesting to listen to, oh, making good points. Um, and you're learning all the time. I exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you, d you don't really find this from these uh, woke academics. No. It's more the, the opposite. Uh, you yeah, know, they big... sort of uh, seem to attack your intelligence and uh, yeah. promote ideas that you were discounted oh, yes. a long time ago as being imbecilic. But, oh, yeah. yeah, and then say that you're everything from a Nazi to whatever. I yeah, mean, you spend yeah. more time looking for where their nanny is. Mm -hmm. You think she's wandered off and she needs to come back and maybe sort them out, but uh, uh, it's pathetic. <laughs> I, I remember your, um, you did the interview with uh, Laurie Penny here as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, was, that was a, a, an interesting uh, conversation. Well, I saw her <laughs> and I recognised her. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and I said, I know who you are. And she looked all happy and I said, well, I don't think much of you. <laughs> and that's when she didn't look very happy. <laughs> Um, it was David Starkey gave her a good telling off on stage. Yes, uh, and yeah, he, yeah. he's been deplatformed. Mm -hmm. One of our most amazing speakers and you know academics in the yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. And he was just next to the sport little girl, and I think he'd had a glass of wine. And, and he was going to do some other charity thing in the past where she was. He, he very much did the teacher yeah. pointing at her, well, yeah, while wagging his finger thing. Yes, yeah. And, um, and she's just sitting there, and she looks like she's wearing a 1970s science fiction bangle around her neck, I think. Something that looked a bit silly if I've got the right video in mind. And, um, and uh, the, the unbelievable um, contrast mm -hmm. of his intellectual status, and also his kindness, mm -hmm. and his charitability compared to her arrogance. And, uh, I mean... Often we've got feminists who aren't women, the girls, and they're actually pointing their finger at us Yeah. while they're yeah. talking to us. And, you know, it's, you've got this. And it's not a woman, it's a girl mm -hmm. who's come from a wealthy family. One of the funniest things we saw uh, a couple of weeks ago was Black Lives Matter, and they had the pl poshest voice of a young black woman I've ever heard right, yeah, on, yeah. A, on a loudspeaker. And she's obviously been educated at some of the best schools in this country. Mm -hmm. And all around her, uh, <laughs> the mob, and uh, it was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. She, she's yeah, got uh, more privilege by the way she spoke, and she had to have been. No one would go around talking like that unless you've had an, an amazing uh, upbringing in this country. Because yeah, most girls yeah, who speak uh, like that are white posh girls. No, that's, that's, that's all good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've looked at, um, you know, the general experience of being at Speaker's Corner and doing yeah. the, the talks here. And so you think overall there's been a positive change in the last uh, six or so years that you've been coming here? Um, there's been a positive change in politics. In, in the men's rights movement, there's been a huge change. The first thing is, is that women have stepped up, and some of our best speakers now who represent us are women. Um, they seem to have the social power men don't, and people ignore men. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that Elizabeth Hobson's now the leader of J Justice for Men and Boys is brilliant. Oh, and the other thing is, we've always been very lucky to have Mike Buchanan join us. Yes, I've he, he comes quite along honored. quite a bit, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we've had a lot of fun with him yeah, yeah, um, yeah. down here, and he enjoys it. Mm, mm -hmm. And Elizabeth's come a couple of times. We've had Natty here. Yeah, uh, and yeah. we've had a lot of our other guys who come down here, because we're also joined by people who don't get on the ladder, but they stand among the crowd, and they discuss things with the crowd. Right. Which yeah, is really yeah. good. And, of course, we've had times when people have turned nasty, and it's good to have a few people round. Um, uh, one of our friends, Linton, a guy got up on his stepladder 
Right, and he, he was. I, like, I remember I was involved yeah. in uh, yeah trying yeah. to uh, yeah bring the other guy down from yeah. the step ladder in, in that uh, incident. Yeah. Uh, well, Linton's in his six, mid sixties, and he's mm -hmm. eye level with the guy when he's on the ladder. The guy got on his ladder and was towering over him, and yeah. then yeah. we all, you got the police in. I we all came over, and then the guy lifted his fist when he got off the ladder to punch Richard, um, and the police you brought the police in time. Um, and of course, the guy was defending his wife's honour. Um, for sure. Not I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure what he was doing. I mean, it, it was fairly idiotic. Um, I, I you know, like uh, I was trying to remind him that it was Speaker's Corner and not uh, yeah. um, Cage Fighter's Corner <laughs> and so on. But yeah, I think yeah. he's part of the sphere to do with the Red Fins. Right, yeah. I think yeah. he's come with them because I've recognised, I think I've seen him with them. Mm -hmm. And one of the most interesting things with the Red Fins when we first saw them, they came here the first time and it was pouring with rain. Yeah, yeah. And they were pushing us. Uh, some old lady told me to shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And then she's on the ladder t uh, talking about all the children. And you're thinking, well, these women hate children. They hate men. They hate families. Mm -hmm. These are radical feminists. The first speech was about Andrea Dworkins and how inspiring she is. There, there was a few <laughs> about Andrea Dworkin. And yeah. uh, she seemed to be some sort of a oh, messiah held by a lot of these rad femmes. Yeah. And it was like, have, have you guys even heard about Andrea Dworkin? <laughs> what, well, why are you promoting her? Yeah. Out of everyone who you could promote, she would be the... Yeah. The worst example of a role model or hero, I could imagine. But, well, they're yeah. wondering why they're floundering a bit now. Uh -huh. That's why. But what <laughs> most people don't realise is a lot of people in leadership roles of, of feminism also like Andrea Dworkins. Mm. The fluffy feminist, or the woman who believes in equality, as she understands it, which she means she doesn't really understand feminism, um, would say, oh, Andrea Dworkins, oh no, not really, that's one of those feminists. But they don't realise that a lot of these ones behind the scenes and the ones that are um, in, in political life and academic life, they're fans of Andrea Dworkin. I, I, I don't know why anyone would be a fan of Andrea well, Dworkin. Well, because they're extremists. Uh, yeah, yeah. I they're mean, extremists. It just doesn't seem to be the sort of person who would have fans, but um, I, I guess, uh, you know, well, I was may, maybe there are a few feminist extremists who, uh, yeah, fit that bill. Well, no, I'm no, waiting yeah. for them to make a sex doll modelled on her, but no, it might sure. be a bit more expensive with the amount of materials you'd need, and uh, it might come with a wheelchair. As well. I'm, I'm not sure J4MB are going to make the Andrea Dworkin sex doll, but uh, well, yeah. Well, if someone does, they'll probably end up in prison for uh, <laughs> grotesque uh, behaviour. Yeah, I, I remember that day as well, and it was, um, yeah, the, the weather was horrendous, I seem mm -hmm. to recall, and uh, yeah, bitterly cold, and then we seem to have massive... Uh, storm halfway through the talk yeah. and I, I don't know it was um like I, I was kind of finding it interesting just from a these guys are really insane you yeah. know perspective but uh but I, i'm not sure if you felt the same way well you you were being uh, bustled about yeah there were women backing into you a little old lady with a rucksack she's yeah. got a scottish yeah, yeah. name backing into me putting umbrellas up so no one could see mike <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Richard went home and he found that one of them had run the heel down his leg and he had dry blood on it right, and, well, and, yeah, yeah. and Natty was getting roughed up by some bloke yeah yeah, yeah. and um, and, and uh, was it Kelly oh, Kelly J Keen was quite happy for that to go on and mm -hmm. yet they're saying that we're the ones that are the you know and they know we're not going to hit them back because you don't yeah, do that and if yeah, we huh. did Oh, and the stuff on the internet with these people, with this woman saying she was a boxer, coming in and saying, defending the granny who told me to, you know, where to go, and uh, it's just, and yet, <clears throat> I mean, it's crazy stuff. I think they, uh, they seem to stop that kind of behaviour next time they came, and we haven't had it since, really. Right, yeah. They, yeah, yeah um, and the, the sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they came to Speaker's Corner and expected not to be heckled. Yeah, I mean, yeah. who comes to Speaker's Corner? Heckling's a big part of this. It actually trains you to be a speaker, yeah, learning yeah. how to deal with people. But um, And if you come here and you expect the red carpet, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to deserve to cop. Get yeah, you, you see this from some of the left-wing groups, that they uh, yeah. want to come along and not uh, actually talk to anyone else. Uh, I think we saw this with Extinction Rebellion as well. Yeah. Uh, they, they only wanted to keep to themselves. They weren't interested in talking to other people. And no. it's like, why did you come to Speaker's Corner then? If yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I sort of, um, I, I do think that uh, with the, the radical feminist crew, um, or this group, that uh, I, I kind of agree with, you know, a lot of the, you know, for instance, um, being against the uh, 
the trans women, men in, um, you know, female bathrooms mm. or in um, mm. pl playing various sports, that, that sort of thing. I, I, you know, in complete agreement with this. Mm. Well, I, I say to these, I've said to them, I says, you're reaping what you sow. I says, yeah, you've, been yeah. chasing, but you've been chased by your own Frankenstein monster in a skirt. Right, and a right. frock, basically, and they are. They created this. Um, they they tried to destroy masculinity. They yeah, have feminized yeah. boys, uh -huh. and the only role model many boys have had are females, and often single mothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, they they seem to go along with the feminization of the workplace and yeah, the uh, society as a whole. And look at the look what's happened now. And and the gynocentrism is in it. The gynocentrism yeah, yeah. in it is the fact that now men can complain. Men who identify as women can complain about women and it will be taken seriously. I mean, when has that happened in history? Unless you're very wealthy. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't. And this is what I think the basis is, is that they've lost their position as women, mm -hmm. where they, they have the moral authority to, to point things out to people and can, you know, chastise people. And now we've got people who identify as... I mean, there's always been trans people. But yeah, the population yeah. has rocketed since men have been pushed out of the world and masculinity and male values. Yeah, yeah. And now we've got these people who did it, who are now, and, and the, you know, so ridiculously hypocrisy, the hypocrisy is unbelievable. Yeah, they can't yeah. even see what they've done. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I said, you've caused this. And, and I, was, I had this large Karen-like woman with legs like, uh, uh, you know, uh, tree trunks. And she was yelling at me because I said to her, I said, well, you're being deplatformed. I said, well, you're the ones who bloody started this. And she goes, how dare you? You're against free speech. And I said, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, and then there seemed to be a slightly insane narrative, which was that uh, it was uh, misogynistic men who were the reason yeah. for um, the, you know, promotion yeah. of uh, trans women into yeah. women's Taking sports women's spaces. and um, yeah. uh, trans women being allowed into women's prisons or women's bathrooms. Yeah. And, um, and so, well. yeah, you know, that, that they came up with this, this group of uh, patriarchal men who were running society, yeah. who were responsible for it all. And it's like, no, actually, the, the problem is the, the radical left, and that's the same yeah. entity who created the feminist yeah. movement. It's your baby, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was just headed in that direction, yeah. you know? But the, the real issue here is, is that we've got feminists in schools encouraging children to uh, transition to being yeah. either boys yeah, or yeah. girls from the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not men doing that. It's not trans men doing that. It's feminists. And yeah, down in yeah. Brighton, they got some feminist teacher in the school, and they got loads of children who want to transition now. Uh -huh. um, that's them doing it. It's another, and it, this is a fight over resources in many respects amongst the feminists. Yeah, it, it seems to me that we, in the past, had more of a traditional society, and there mm. were more clearly defined gender roles, yeah. and that that worked out well for people generally. Mm. And, um, worked out better. Yeah, yeah. And, and now, you know, we've been moving against that ever since the 60s, for sure. Mm. And um, now it's, it seems that we've got to this absurd stage of... Um, Clown world. Kind of, dis <laughs> yeah, destroying any way in which the genders interact with each mm. other or function mm. as themselves as well. Yeah. And uh, it appears, you know, we're at that stage now. What yeah. do you think? Well, and also the thing is, a lot of the, with the young people, the um, uh, anti-fa and that, they are vulnerable because they've never been taught school skills mm -hmm. that they can use. The boys are not really uh, masculine or strong enough to survive. I was brought up in a very female-dominated family. I mean, I was in care and all sorts of bloody things, and um, I wasn't. My biggest problem was being a boy and surrounded by females. Mm. and adult women who were feminists who treated me like um, the enemy all the time. And I watched, it's, uh, the huge effect on my life was like I was watching what adult women were doing when I was a child. And the, the insanity and the, the uh, um, sadistic narcissism, I often call it, because the narcissism was unbelievable. And not only the... the, the um, uh, this whole thing, women and lying is actually a thing. Most people don't realize that. And men also can lie, but women and lying is actually quite a big thing. Not all women, obviously, but it is a thing. One well, of what, just, just sort of lying generally? And, and uh, white, I mean, often if you're, you've got social intelligence, you'll white lie just to, yeah, for people's yeah. feelings. But often there are women who will lie 
their mother, because they, they, they learn by example from their mothers, they will tell the most treacherous lies casually. Mm -hmm. And they will also tell lies about other people, which will have huge uh, um, outcomes for that individual, social outcomes or whatever. And they're quite um, nonplus about it. And yet, I'm, there are men like that. Obvious, I mean, obviously, it's sociopathic behavior, but it seems to be more and more a lot of women are sociopathic, and a lot of them are um, respectable looking ladies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, uh, meeting these rad femmes coming here now, these older ladies, these divorcees who are on permanent uh, holiday, you know, from their ex-husband, you know, divorcees, old divorcees. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, they're chastising everybody and going around telling them that they, uh, you know, that men have the privilege. And you're just thinking, um, well, you just start not taking them seriously. Mm -hmm. And I was brought up to listen to women, and even though I was surrounded by crazy ladies, uh, you know, dysfunctional women, I'll just have a look, quick look at this. Um, and of course, I, as I call them, uh, militant dependents. And there's another term which is a bit probably shocking for people, but I know a lot of women who actually prostitute everything they touch. They prostitute people, they prostitute things. They go through their lives prostituting everyone else instead of themselves. Right. Um, the only way they know how to operate is by using other people and uh, there's no sense of, of shame or uh, accountability. And accountability is a really important thing if you're going to be in a position of power. And mm -hmm. if you're in power, you shouldn't be a dependent and behaving like one where you want more stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've seen that. Um, I, I'd, I'd agree with that completely, yeah. Yeah. We start outside of the argument. I mean, when years ago when we first started out, we didn't really have a language, and we've had our best people in this movement, men and women, who have been online, and they've taught us a language. I mm. mean, um, uh, misandry was said was never a word. There was a fight over Wikile, a uh, wiki, wiki, wasn't it? Uh, so it was what Wikipedia. Or? Wikipedia, yeah. Right, yeah. About yeah. Mis feminists kept saying it wasn't a real word. Right, yeah, yeah. And eventually, I mean, they used, early feminists used to use the term. Mm -hmm. But, and now, you know, we just, and now, and the funny thing is, is what's happening now with these, a lot of feminists, they've got someone somewhere skim reading all the men's rights stuff, and they're taking our arguments, and then they're trying to attack us with them. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, patriarchs, patriarchy hurts men as well. Um... I love the deep resounding voice of Paul Elam when he speaks because you, you almost get red pilled again every time you listen to it. Right, yeah. And yeah. Um, Tom Golden and, and Janice Fiamingo, they're absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that standard of thought, and also it's, it's incredibly generous and often more kind than what fem feminists are vindictive as hell, a lot of them. Yeah, what well, the conversations and the arguments that you hear from them yeah. and so on. Yeah, yeah. And the gobbledygook. Mm -hmm. They confuse people with all the language, which is, you know, what leftists and Marxists do anyway. And yeah, of course, yeah. it's this whole, what's happened, and um, if you ask what's happened with um, now, is that people are beginning to realize the Marxism and, and the intersectionality and all this stuff to do with race, sex, the whole thing based them in on historic, um, uh, what is it, well, what's the term, um, when people are, oh, I can't think of it. This is what happened. It's, I'm not really, um, for someone like me to be doing this, I'm not really the person but, um, to be, because I'm a bit fluffy around the edges and I've got a memory like a sieve. But to come here, somebody's mm -hmm. got to do it. Yeah, and I yeah, also yeah. do the organizing to sort everything out, to, get, to remind everyone that we're coming and that we'll be here and we're going to yeah, have a coffee. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's really important. because you, In our movement, you have people on different levels and the, sometimes the little Santa's helpers are important. Um, yeah, I was just going to say... Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, what you do is, is important and um, I think it's a problem that men do have, which is um, actually being able to continue, sort of continue, like, interacting with each other as a community. Um, just, I guess, especially if it's an all men's group or yeah. primarily men's group, because there's uh, not the, uh, the women to mm. act as a social glue to kind of keep yeah, everyone together. it's a real problem. And ownership is a real problem um, when people 
feel. But you see, us guys go back years. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of things we don't agree on. Yeah, yeah. It's quite funny because often two of our guys have this argument which has gone on for about five years now mm -hmm. uh, about, um, what's the argument about? Um, uh, conspiracy. Once that comes out, an argument oh, right, about yeah. conspiracy. Once yeah, that comes yeah. out, and it, they never get anywhere with it. They're both uh, discontent with it, and uh -huh. they're annoyed with each other, and then they get over it, and they're friends again. But it happens uh, every few months, mm -hmm. and it's the mm -hmm. same argument. But the thing is, um, I used to, I wrote something years ago and said we need to rub along a bit better together, yeah, yeah. even if we disagree. And yet we've managed. We, it's very hard to get. Uh, very few people want to public speak, and the ones that do, might even find their own way to it anyway. It's a, it's a rare bird. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah. we do need. I mean, and like I was saying with, with Mike, and when we had the first conference in London, Mike was a bit worried because we weren't we didn't have um, many people buying tickets to start with. Right. And yeah, so we yeah. we'd been to Golders Green uh, protesting, uh, circumcision protesting, and Golders Green is a Jewish area, so that was interesting. Mm -hmm. It went well. It was a good day. Um, it was a very funny thing. A woman came up to Mike, an old, uh, a rather well-travelled looking old lady, and said to Mike, he wouldn't get a blow job around here if he wasn't circumcised. Which, you know, which may be why Mike doesn't do the <laughs> protesting anymore. But, um, but um, that was funny. But um, and after when Mike left, and so we all started talking, and, and we talked about, well, let's all vol we'll, we'll volunteer. And we pay, I paid for my ticket, we paid for our tickets, but we volunteered as well. And that's one of the things other groups don't have, where you've actually got a nest of people mm -hmm. who have all their own interlinking, and I've got to say, this, uh, the social knitting, we've got guys now who are t way bit better social knitting than I've ever done, and Natty does it as well. I mean, they're ahead of everything I've ever done, um, but you need a population of people who keep everyone together, and we've got that now, and we never used to have that. Um, really important job, and uh, not one that's going to give you great status, because you're not going for that. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's extremely important, and... Yeah. Um, I, I think you know. I think you're all great at doing this. At uh, actually just sending out the the invites, but also at actually yeah. just getting on with everyone. Yeah. Well, um, you, you know, where, where it says, um, I, I you know. I think I'm okay at getting on with other people. I you know. Yeah. I do have uh, occasional spats with people, but then <laughs> I seem to be quite good at uh, not turning that into a, a ending friendship yeah. moment yeah. or something. Whereas um, I don't. Know, I just find with with some of the guys that. Uh, you know, the, the spots do turn into these, uh, yeah, I, I'm not talking to so-and-so anymore moments, and um, yeah. that's, that's kind of annoying, you know, and I, I think, uh, well, I, I prefer it if we were all doing better, you well, know, yeah. with regards to well, that. One of our guys, Richie, said, you've got a great way about you, Roger. He says, you make everyone feel intelligent. And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's nice. <laughs> and uh, um, because the thing is, from my point of view, I want to do something, and if I... It's really important for me or as many people to come as possible. And, and sometimes I ring people up if I hear that they're not having a good time of it, and they may not even like it, and they might find it, you know, but I, sometimes you keep an eye on people um, if they're having a bad time. And in, in terms of the, so, uh, you know, where we are, in terms of the issues that are affecting men and boys, and also generally yeah. the whole feminist thing now, um, I mean, do you, because I, I, I see a lot of the stuff has been sort of swept aside with coronavirus mm. just, just because that seems to be the uh, you know the, the new uh, black star that's uh, come into the solar yeah. system that has just destroyed our focus on all of the other major issues yeah. but I mean that, that the, the problems are still there isn't it you know there's still huge problems with the family court system mm. and with oh, God, um, yeah. Uh, with rape culture and, and all of that. And, so. and, these, and, and the dangerous feminists, as our people have told us, the ones behind the scenes, the political mm -hmm. cross-party feminists and the academics and all these other lawyers and, and, and judges, yeah, they're still yeah, changing yeah. things all the time to be against fathers. And the ta taxes are put against people. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have people that... Because um, we're lucky enough to, to deal with people who are ex-fathers for justice people. Um, and men who've gone through the wood chipper, yeah, and yeah. they and they know what it is, and it's really important to have these people here too. I mean, one of the things in England which has been a big thing from my point of view is Sway No Pie bringing together. Uh, he's a, a veteran uh, speaker, a, a veteran activist, and an author, and a, a speaker, a lecturer on on men's rights and fe anti-feminism, um, if that's the right term. I hopefully he's pleased with that, but. Um, 
Uh, he brought together all of us from all over the country came together. That's when I first met you. Yes. And, yeah. and it created our community. And some of the things he was trying to do with it didn't work. But what it did is it got us all connected. Mm -hmm. And it's gone on from there. Yeah, um, yeah. It was so important to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do get a little annoyed with some, I've got colleagues who will criticize Mike and or criticize other people. That annoys me because they don't realize if it wasn't for Mike, where would we be? He's a very important guy and in his time, I mean I met Mike before he started the party. He's a really important guy. Other, and it's just like, well go start your own party then if you yeah, know. Yeah, and yet yeah. the people I, uh, who do criticize him are my friends as well. But We've also got to be careful because feminists are trying to co-opt our work mm -hmm. and take credit for it and then make it into a woman's issue and then take the funding. Uh, not that we have any funding. I think. What, what was this uh, in relation uh, to? In relation to the whole movement. Okay. Uh, feminists uh, are now starting to talk about male suicide. Right. You know, yeah, masculinity is yeah. the problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, uh, we've got, we have to be aware of that. And where I think uh, we're, I've, we're, I've seen some of that in the UK yeah. with um, some, some of the organisations that have been promoted. Mm. Uh, you know, there's very few actual MRAs on them, and uh, instead, you know, quite a few people who won't use the word feminism, for instance, yeah. and uh, you know, who, who won't uh, criticise that movement. And it seems that they're getting some funding, not a whole load, mm. but. Uh, some funding and some uh, exposure in the media yeah. and uh, we're, you know, like uh, the, the actual MRAs and the actual anti-feminists aren't getting any of that uh, funding, any oh, of that exposure. Be, uh, what is it, basement dwelling woman beaters according to the mainstream. Yeah, well, World of <laughs> Warcraft <laughs> playing neckbeards who yeah. Uh, yeah, live in their well, mother's basement. Even got, uh, with the alternative media is the other massive change where how many people are watching CNN or BBC anymore? Um, and people like uh, Carl Benjamin, who I was lucky enough to meet once after going to your place for, for a, a party once. Um, it, it coming was back on the train. Yeah, I met oh, him, okay, I cool, to him cool. for over an hour. Nice, and nice. Um, people are listening to him now. More yeah, people yeah. who aren't in the alternative meeting, uh, um, meeting movement. Mm, and mm. of course, with COVID, everyone's been stuck at home. And they're listening to the completely uh, same old record on the news items every hour and, and thinking well there must be more going on and starting to do research and um, and I don't agree with everything that Sargon says but that doesn't matter and of course Jordan Peterson coming along my god mm -hmm. brilliant and of course the right a lot on the right don't like Jordan Peterson uh, some of the things about him well that's fine it doesn't mean he was uh, an unimportant person oh he's massive he's uh, massively ma important. majorly important yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, Really good on, uh, I think, questioning, actually destroying a lot of the mm. feminist arguments and doing yeah. so from his own um, intellectual yeah. background as a, uh, you know, one, one of the, yeah. cl clearly one of the, you know, most uh, amazing thinkers yeah. that there's been in recent times. And, yeah. you know, his uh, kind of clinical psychologist background and then applying that to the, uh, the feminist arguments and um, absolutely destroying them. So I, I think he's done really well. Yeah. Uh, with, with that. Yeah. Okay. Going on from the perspective of if you were looking at the right and to talk my, my you know, European people, I'm one of them. One of the challenges is, is that European people, have, um, Western people, have not been looking after their children very well. No, I come no. from a, uh, generations of dysfunction in my family. Mm -hmm. And you look at like some of the family, uh, you know, with mass immigration and that, some of these other families, they're more traditional, uh, they, care, they look after their kids better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're more focused on their children. Our, our generation and our, my parents and my grandparents are the boomers and people like that. They all want to be, you know, they all want to be this great success. You know, 1950s style, your California with the great lifestyle and all the rest of it. But the kids mm -hmm. are like accessories to it. Yeah. And in dysfunctional yeah, yeah. families, it's a thousand times worse. Uh -huh. And we need to actually look at parenting uh, better and also teaching children um, the basics so they actually from a young age they're more business minded so they're going to survive better than just being um, lost yeah yeah, yeah. like I was because mm -hmm. other people you see other some other families good families their kids grow up standing well you know firmly on both two feet I, I think less narcissistic less hedonistic yeah. as well you know um, that's uh, yeah I mean that just we, needs to be uh, 
a lot of help given to the next generation so they avoid these pitfalls. Well, we don't even know what gender we are. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, instead, yeah, they're having, you know, the, uh, they're confusing the hell out of them by uh, saying yeah. they may have been born with the wrong gender and the wrong body. Well, a lot of those creeps who go to schools and, and all this, and of course, um, uh, I was talking to Brooklinda Brown, and she said she knows a drag act, a uh, drag queen, which is, um, you know, very popular in, in London and years ago. And sh this uh, uh, drag queen was saying, you know, um, drag queen story time is, is wrong, because mm -hmm. the thing is, is with with drag acts and all that, the stripping and all, you know, all that sort of thing, and strip clubs, and having it's it's adult humor. It's not just adult humor; it's extreme adult humor. Yeah, in an yeah. environment where there's drugs and there's an environment of lots of sex. Uh -huh. So, and when you have somebody uh, in a, a, an outrageous costume showing off their aronosones, whether they have them or not, you know, being another gender, that's inappropriate for children. I, I think, yeah, there is the hypersexualization of is. children. And I mean, you're seeing that now. There's that uh, uproar about the new Netflix special, uh, mm. Cuties, it's called. Oh, God. And um, yeah, there's uh, a lot of. It seems promotion of young girls um, acting in a hypersexualized manner. Well, the main and child's then, a black girl. I would expect more from the black community to say, "Hold on, we're not, you know, we're not whores, or you know, what are we? Just sex yeah, objects." Yeah. Um, yeah. But you don't, and they seem to think. Some people seem to think it's fine. It's not fine. No, um, no. Because it's disastrous. And my own family, I've seen with the, what's gone on in, in behind the closed doors. It's wrong. Mm, mm -hmm. um, there's so much. Children should be focused on, you know, as we all know, uh, interacting and learning how to deal with each other, learning what not to do, learning yeah, the, the consequences yeah. if you do do it. <laughs> and, I mean, generally, I think with their own sexuality, I, I think there's, well, there's a lot to be said for just um, stepping back and letting them develop at their own pace, yeah. at their own level, you know, yeah. and not uh, coming along and saying uh, uh, that they, you know, should be competing for this... Uh, talent show where they should be doing yeah. all this twerking and grinding and, yeah. and whatnot and, and going to university when most of the people who go to university aren't university quality people all the trades all mm -hmm. the um crafts that we used to have yes you're competing with um china now so yeah, you know that yeah, kills yeah. a lot but but um a lot of people you highly skilled people which aren't working anymore which are going to university and getting a massive an yeah. absolutely massive debt uh -huh. yeah, while the gender yeah. studies uh, hypocrite is getting, uh, you know, medical pay, all the medical bills paid for it and uh, retirement. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, as, as you've sort of said, it's um, within the West, it's, you know, the, uh, the, big the, grab. the parents' generation not looking after the children mm. and then they're, they're just doing extremely poorly. And um, it's all, all of these, uh, you know, I suppose death by a thousand cuts to the yeah. next generation and just... Um, Treating them really badly and, and yeah, hypersexualizing the children, getting them confused well, about no uh, being a what, what gender country, they are, yeah. and then also you know not not promoting the the traditional values, which is mm. what has always worked to actually ensure that we do well, yeah. that each generation does well, yeah. and, and we're not doing that. Yeah. So and having the skills, yeah, yeah. the basic skills, for learning to do well. Um, We've always had dysfunctional people, dysfunctional communities, dysfunctional mm -hmm. families, but now when everyone becomes that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being chastised by wealthy children from, you know, university and that is, is it also amusing. Mm -hmm. And if you do tell them any details of what you saw as a child and what you saw it happen to people in your family, they mock the hell out of you and they go, oh, you poor little thing. And then you're saying, well, no, actually, I'm not a poor little thing. But, you know, I'm explaining to you think, the reality because I was in a children's home, and yeah, at seven yeah. I realised how lucky I was compared to other kids there. I say that all the time. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't find that's a particularly human response, uh, you know, to someone who suffered child abuse, yeah. uh, mocking them. Well, I, I they think do, that's, because uh, they've never... That's, that's quite yeah. disgusting to, yeah. you know... But look, at yeah, the, yeah. Another, one of the things that turned a lot of people against feminism in this country was they did absolutely nothing to what they call the grooming gangs, where th uh, even a million, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of young girls, and yeah, probably yeah. boys, have been raped, mass raped, and the feminists never said anything. Yeah, curiously silent about that one, Curiously wasn't silent, because it, it yeah, wasn't yeah. the white men doing it. Yeah, uh, it was Pakistani yeah. men, um, Muslim Pakistani men uh, doing this all over the country since the day they got off the plane. Um, going yeah, back yeah. 40 years, mm -hmm. and they said nothing. 
and I've seen people here who were anti, who, were, who used to argue with us, change their uh, tone completely when they realised that was going on, and we're with the feminists. The yeah, thing is, yeah, yeah. they're not going to get funding from by um, attacking the uh, Pakistani community. They'll get they'll get funding. The, 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 I mean, it's brutal. A lot of these people, when they're running their charities and they get their their, um, their careers by attacking a European man, they will be able to continue, uh, you know, calling for, for charity charity money and all the rest of it, money from government. But they can't attack the the other communities and minorities because they're meant to be, you know, the victim sta stack basically. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's utterly grotesque. I, we once had a woman here, an old woman, and I was talking about suicide, and it's about, at that time, it was about 12 or 13 men a day in Britain, and she was dancing in front of me, yeah. pretending to play the violin and clapping, mm -hmm. um, and smiling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we call her old, oh, I call her old Fanny, I pretend she's one of the last of the um, white feather girls. I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's the one who has interacted with me a number of times, but uh, it, it may I'm be. Not, I haven't seen her, hopefully she's popped a cork and, and you know, been run over or something. Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, she was the one who turned up when we had the Reggie Yates war, men at war on, right. <laughs> and she was screaming, well, um, uh, men take bullets and women take penises. That was her, her okay, remark. Right, right. And yeah, I never yeah. heard what she actually said. <laughs> Maybe we should share the bullets round, I think, especially <laughs> when she's concerned. But the, the fact is, uh, you've got this well dressed older lady um, laughing at that. Mm -hmm. uh, the suicide of young people, um, young men. But, mm -hmm. Oh, because they're men. I've had young women come up, well-dressed young women, with young men, handsome young guys, all professional-looking people, and they go, oh, I've been raped, the ladies say. Oh, I've been raped, and so casually. You know, mm -hmm. I expect that a bad haircut, you'd get more of a, an emotional reaction from that than if you'd actually been raped. These people, they haven't been raped. I don't believe they Did, have. Are they just defining rape in a very loose uh, Yeah, in a very loose, loose terms. Context. About, yeah, 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 loose terms. And, of course, when you're expanding the definition of a horrible crime, um... You know, you can just flick your hair and say, oh, I have been, yeah. So some I, guy slapped me on the ass. Yeah, but, uh, uh, yeah. Hence, I oh, was Probably raped, not even that. Maybe yeah, fart yeah. rape or, or steer rape or something rape. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mark, Mark Pearson. <laughs> yeah. No, it, and the thing is, it's really offensive because if you take someone who's been brutally raped and then you've got someone like this, a, a socialite walking around with, from a well-educated, they had to have been from the way they were dressed and everything. I should have said to the men, Remember me, because you are going to regret it. These women are going to destroy you, and they will. Mm -hmm. Once they get bored with them, it'll be the men's fault, and they'll strip them of everything. Yeah, I, I think if they're interacting at, at that level with um, you know the concerns about men and boys, then you know <laughs> it doesn't bode well for their no. current partners if if that's the way no. they think. And um, I you know I I do just think that there's there's this problem of um, I, I I suppose. You know, um, kind of just put putting women in this position where they're, you know, like um, in this, they're able to judge all of these gender relations. Judge, jury, and, and executioner. Yeah, they're, not a, yeah. They're, they're they're behaving like aristocrats. They uh -huh. conduct themselves, and then they tell you, oh, the best thing about the radical feminists is they say we have no voice. Mm -hmm. They're taking our voice. What the hell do you hear about? You've got you can have a plane crash or a boat go down and everyone drowns or, or is killed, burnt to death. And then they talk about, you know, um, some, a ridiculous non-issue to do yeah. with nail polish or something ridiculous. Or, or some idiot wolf whistle, you know, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a non-issue. And often it's something that's not even really unpleasant. Or even air conditioning is sexist or something like that. And these things are things. And I remember when I worked years ago in a, in a design company, uh, the complaining about the temperature. Mm -hmm. by people who have never done any physical work in their life or any active sport or anything, have no muscle um, or anything like that, and they just sit there shivering. Uh -huh. uh, jump about, get up for a minute, have a walk, go make, you know, go make yourself a cuppy, walk around the block in your break, mm -hmm. warm up. You know, uh, well, don't wear something sexy because it's going to keep you cold. You know, who mm -hmm. are you trying to impress in the office? Uh, it's pathetic. And yet then when you talk about something real like suicide or... or 
the wood chipper and what men go through and how they lose the contact with their children while the ex is actually destroying the children. Just ignore that and move Just back to the that. air yeah, conditioning the... concern. Well, yeah, one of yeah. the guys that joined us here once, his two daughters were taken into care and on his Facebook thing he's got the picture of his three-year-old daughter who's got a cigarette burn right in the forehead where her mother stuck a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. And, and and nobody took any notice of it. And and he's fought to get the girls back, and the girls want their daddy back. He used to have a plastic bag with a little teddy bear in it because the daughter asked her father to buy her one, and he says, "Well, you already got one, honey." But she wanted it. It was from a second-hand store because obviously everything's been taken from him. He's broke, and she got one, and she said, "This is for you, daddy, so that you can remember us." Mm -hmm. And so he used to come here with a plastic bag with a teddy in it, just oh, so yeah. his daughter yeah, was right. close to him. Um, and he's taking, he's declaring war on, he's declared war legally upon what they did to him. Uh, the legal, the, the whole legal thing, the social workers. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, I think the father's rights concerns are, I mean, absolutely oh. abhorrent. And oh, um, no. yeah, you know, uh, I've, I've been looking into this recently and the situation's mm. got a lot worse in the last mm. 10 years. And um, Because the top feminists are pushing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yet, unlike fem if we were like feminists, we'd be saying, oh, well, men do don't do things like that. We know they're terrible men. We know they're awful men. We know there are men that can do terrible things to children and women and other men. Our feminists, they just won't talk about that. Yeah, the only women yeah, they right. hate are men's rights activists. Women, <laughs> right, so they're the, yeah, ones, yeah. the ones that are bringing back uh, sexism and, um, uh, you know, misogyny. Mm -hmm. um, and my little posters here are good. Yeah, People yeah. Uh, do them, uh, look at them and take photos sure sure and uh, you know you just have them in the background when you're doing your always talks. always and the yeah, police yeah. let me do it it's just uh, and uh, and uh, what it takes half the bloody day to put them all up there now i've got a better system now but um right right yeah uh. fluffing around but uh no one's ripped them up yet that's that's good that's, that's good that's what <laughs> happens um yeah. I'll, i think we'll probably call it a day though yeah, so uh, yeah thank you for talking to me rod thank you thank Thanks, you bye-bye